Hi, my name is Ken Lasterson. Um, I wrote the microbiome prescription site. I originally got into the microbiome through chronic fatigue syndrome. The work originally started on cfsremission.com and then sort of moved from there. One of the things I've gotten a couple of emails recently about has been that it has been challenging for people with cognitive impairment, i.e. chronic fatigue syndrome, to navigate or understand the site. So I ended up this weekend doing some revisions, some additions, and the goal of which is to make it much more manageable for um, somebody with chronic fatigue syndrome or other cognitive impairment without giving up the richness of data, which is something which is a sort of, it's a balancing act between the two. Uh, I don't want to oversimplify and just see a forest without the fine details because sometimes those details are important for some people. Um, lots of different people make use of the site, so I'm trying to do a balance. So let's take a look at chronic fatigue syndrome. Here I have a sample up. Uh, happens to be somebody I know who has chronic fatigue syndrome. If you go down to changing your microbiome, you will see there's a brand new item there explicitly for chronic fatigue syndrome in my brain fall. Nice and simple. You click that, and it goes over and gives you the recommendation. And what we have on the page is the basic recommendation sitting there, nice, clean, straightforward, um, gives things to avoid or not to avoid. Uh, just in case we have one thing which is a real avoid and everything else, is much less the numbers are scaled so the maximum value is a one so you need to make some site adjustments for what the uh, impact is basically um i see as number three in the recommended um licorice or uh, which is something which i knew i used in recovery and in fact there was a uh, many years ago a chap the name of captain dave who recovered from it, he sold licorice, the good stuff, and it was very effective. Um, we have a psyllium, husk, berbine, another one, vitamin D, vitamin D, there's a German physician who put a lot of people into remission by simply bringing in sufficiently high dosage of vitamin D. What the ideal dosage is questionable, um, I know for myself, Actually, I continue to take 15,000 IUs a day of vitamin D3. So, and I have blogged on my site about vitamin D and what the recommended levels are. Basically, if you are not at the high end, repeat high end of the normal range, supplementing it will probably be of benefit. Um, other things, cranberry juice, etc., they decrease in value, niacin is one of my regular things. It helps particularly with um, blood flow, which impacts brain cognitive things. Um, niacin is a vasodilator. It allows the veins to open up. Your the inflammation is causing the your blood vessels and arteries to close down, which means you get less blood going to you, and less blood means less oxygen, and less oxygen to the brain means brain fog. Okay, um, and then we have other things, melatonin supplement, NAC, vitamin there. We have over here, we have things to avoid. We notice one of them, uh, one of the regular probiotics, which many people take. I believe that any probiotic would be good for you, and it's not. Some are good and some are bad. We have one which are bad. Another one which is bad. Another one which is bad. Uh, omega-3 fatty acids, again bad, so 3 m Now, quick explanation is you have microbiome shifts, and what we are trying to do is correct the shifts. And the shifts which we're trying to correct, if you go up to here, the bacteria detail, it will open up, showing the details. And these are the ones which are too low or too high. These are the ones which we want to modify it and that list would be short or very long depending on the state of things so that will give you the quick suggestions next we have commercial probiotics um i can tell you the name of a probiotic 
and most people get frustrated especially with brain fog trying to find that somewhere and there are literally hundreds so i've added in a list of commercial probiotic products and what we have is oops ugh we don't find a single one which is all positive that is everything in it only produced good effects some of the stuff evidently produces bad effects these are all ones which produce nothing but bad effects in other words if you're taking them i would suggest discussing with a physician about stopping them entirely we now have down below sh showing mixed or no impact and the mixed impact means it helps some and and hurts others so it's a it's a mixed bag we don't have an easy solution but we do have something one thing that seems to be at the top couple is bifidus impetus probiotic which happens to be the bacteria which is common in infants and it dominates with infants and goes there and then we have a bunch of things which have no impact which means if you want to take them good go ahead take them they have no impact whatsoever if these are things which your natural path or your thing wants you to take go ahead do it things that for example mutaflor has no known impact for myself mutaflor made a major impact and the reason it's probably not included is we don't have enough data about it per se so therefore we have a whole bunch of things there which are no known impact which in theory means you can take them without being too worried Okay, so let's close down to commercial probiotics. And now we have flavonoids. Flavonoids are, okay, some of the studies only report on flavonoids, not on particular food group, etc. And sometimes, okay, we have good results with this flavonoid. Uh, what is it in? And there we have some food which some, some of the flavonoids are, which is basically thyme, clove, and that's it. And then we have other, the flavonoids precise. And we see vitamin D, all forms of it sitting there. And there, here is something which you may not know what it is. If you click on it, it'll go through and list in decreasing order what is in it. And we see that limes and lemons and oranges are all high in the list, which some people will say, oh, you mean vitamin C? not quite um vitamin c is extract from those things and it is a pure extract flavonoids is one of some of these chemicals that tags along in limes and lemons and orange juice and it has its own separate function which is different than vitamin c hence you want to actually have limes or lemons or oranges depending on what you can tolerate orange juice for so personally as prophylactic i have a glass of orange juice every morning and a glass of orange juice every evening um simply because this happened to be on my list as recommended for ongoing although i'm fully recovered i don't want to i still have enough residue bacteria of the wrong type that I want to keep them in control. Okay, now let's go back and simply say, okay, I think that is it. Um, I will mention one thing, that you are able to do better tuning if you want, by going here and go for advanced suggestion, which means you are able to do more picking of what you want in there or not want in there. So that goes over there. Um, those things are default. You probably want to go down to select chronic fatigue syndrome down below. Um, or if you have a different condition, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome there. And it gives you the number of items so you can get a bigger list if you want. You can go in and add in other things um, which are there. For example, if you want to look at prescription drugs, if you want to look at antibiotics, actually, or drugs, non-drugs. In other words, you can toss in everything, and I'm going to jack this up to oh, 50 and 50. I'm going to basically do what you probably don't want to do, which gives too many choices, and 
click here and the page comes up the same way and it shows things and lo and behold number one on the list is tetracyclines which is a type of antibiotic it is a type of antibiotic which is part of the Jardine protocol it's used in a um Professor Garf Nicholson's use it too. In other words, from the microbiome, it's just chronic fatigue person. The first highest pick is just antibiotic to correct things. And Zifamax, another one from that's from the Zardine protocol. In other words, although the program knows nothing about the Zardine protocol, it only knows about bacteria in the gut. The ones it comes up with happens to match a established chronic fatigue syndrome medical protocol coming from Dr. Cecilia Jardine, who is based in South Africa, who has had good success with it, and other things. So it suddenly gives you an interesting confidence because what it does do is gives recommendations which actually are in agreement with clinical practice. Okay, now, before you go up, you should read or if you, you are consulting with somebody which you should be is to read this page which basically goes through and gives caveats about what is being done what it can do what it can't do it can do everything it cannot tell you what the dosages are can't tell you what the probability is it can just tell you that you have increased confidence by taking the stuff to make a desired improvement okay 12 minutes is probably the maximum time which kind of a person can concentrate, so I'll shut up now.